Well, it's the holiday season, and it's supposed to be a time of joy and happiness and love, just permeating everything that we do. And things are going good until you try to go to the store, and uh, you run into traffic. And I was at a store just yesterday, I'd gone through the store, picked up a few things, and I went to pay for them, and silly me thinking I would be able to do that in an easy way. Uh, because as I got up front, there was this huge line. And I counted, because that's what I do in situations like this, I counted 20 people in line of, in front of me, and the people at the store, the, the store managers, had two cashiers running. <laughs> and I'm thinking, seriously, does anyone know that this is the Christmas season and that things may get a little busy? And, you know, to be fair, at least the two cashiers they had were, were working very slow, and so that made it even better for me. I'll tell you what, as I was in line... I was not thinking preacher thoughts, not at all. There's all kinds of things I was thinking. And what I realized is I'm not really happy right now. There's just not a lot of joy permeating my being. And I thought, you know, probably a lot of us have experienced stuff like that. This is the Christmas season. It's supposed to be a joyous time. And we're missing out on what God has in store for us. And there's things that are happening in our lives. And it's taken away the joy that we should be having. And so how do we deal with that? What are you missing this Christmas? Are are you missing the joy of Christmas? We're going to look at how you can get that back. And so if you have a Bible, turn to Luke chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible, there should be one of the chairs in front of you. It's page 275. If you did bring your own Bible, Luke is uh, kind of toward the end. It's in the the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and then the book of Luke. Luke chapter 2. And what has happened is that Jesus has just been born, and there are shepherds out, and they're in the fields, and an angel appears to them. Luke chapter 2, I'll start reading with verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Well, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Excuse me. As as you uh, as we read the story and think about the shepherds, we see that that there is the need for joy. There is the need for joy. Back in verse eight, uh, and the shepherds were living out in the fields nearby, watching over their flocks at night. For the shepherds during this time in in history, the shepherds were kind of the lower class of people. Okay, first of all, you're hanging around sheep all the time, so that's certainly not going to help. But beyond that, for the Jewish people, they were unclean. You know, they were out in the, in the fields all the time. They didn't have time to go to the temple and, and do all those ceremonies. And, and they probably looked and smelled just, just a little fresh. And so uh, beyond that, they're watching flocks of sheep. That is their occupation. I can think of probably other jobs slightly more glamorous than watching sheep all day. But that's a situation for the shepherds. They, they're in need of joy. You know, for the same reason for us, there are a number of reasons why we need joy today. We need joy because we live in a messed up world. You know, we live in a world with school shootings and a media that that wants to blame everybody except for the person. We live in a a world with financial insecurity, with depressions and recessions and crashes and, and high unemployment. There's just so much uncertainty financially. We live in a world of political fighting. You know, the last couple of weeks, I've been listening to talk radio, and I've been listening to conservative stations and liberal stations. And what I found was just very interesting. Uh, 
I would hear a lot of the same thoughts, and, and, and I would hear that they, both sides of talk radio, they have the same goals, they have the same problems, and ironically enough, they have the same solution. The solution is blame the other party. Whichever party it is that's on the radio, they're blaming the other party for all the issues. You know, it is easy to look at the world that's around us and just, you know, just want to give up. Just get depressed and just give up on the whole thing. We need joy because we live in a messed up world. We need joy because at times our lives can be monotonous. The shepherds, I mean, you look at their life, it was not a glamorous life. It was live outside, it was watch the sheep, go to bed, rinse and repeat, you know, do the same thing the next day. Uh, and just like the shepherds, you know, I think there are some of us that, that are in that monotonous lifestyle. You get up, you go to work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, and you get up the next day, rinse and repeat. You know, it, it's the same thing. And it's no wonder it's hard for some people to have joy. You know, it reminds me of the movie that's coming out real soon, The, the Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I remember in high school reading that story. And it's just a story about a guy who does that. He just has a boring job and he just gets up, he lives his day, he puts up with it, and he goes to bed. And so to help himself through that, he starts fantasizing about things that he could be. You know, he's in, in one instance, he's a superhero, and then he's a, he's a secret spy, and all these things trying to bring some life to his life, because he isn't experiencing any. We need joy in our life, because at times it can be monotonous. We need joy, because some of us are dealing with hard situations. Maybe you have health issues, or, or someone that you love has health issues, and you keep going to doctors and time after time after time and nothing changes in those situations. Uh, maybe you have relational issues and it's just compounded because during this time of the year, you get to see those people a lot more often. And as much as you want to be separate from them, you're put in a situation where you have to deal with them and it puts a lot of strain on you. Or maybe you're having financial issues and money is tight, and as tight as money is, during this Christmas season, you're expected to give out even more. And you know what the credit card balance is going to look like in January. And there's all kinds of situations, and we need joy because we're dealing with a lot of difficulties. There are so many things going on in our lives, we desperately need joy. Where do we find it? Well, the angel tells us what the source of joy is. There in Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. The angel said to the shepherds, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. The angel says to the shepherds, hey, don't be afraid. Don't get scared. Don't freak out on me, okay? I've got a message that's going to bring joy not just to you, but to everybody. Today in the town of David in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. And the angel's message talks about, obviously, the birth of Jesus. And the, the angel gives three different titles to Jesus. And the first is Savior. Whether we like it or not, the Bible says that we are sinners. And because we are sinners, we need to be saved from our sin. We don't always want to hear that. But that's what the Bible says. And it's interesting that God sent us a Savior. His son could have been born with any occupation, but he needed to send a savior. Max Lucado writes and says it like this. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. And so God sent a savior. One of the titles of Jesus there is Savior, and Jesus is the Savior. He's sent to save us from our sins. The second title is Messiah, and Messiah means anointed one or, or chosen one. And when you think about chosen, God had a plan, and part of his plan was that his chosen one, his son, would show up. And so it, to me, it's comforting to know that, first of all, God has a plan, Second of all, that plan has been put into motion at the birth of Jesus. It's good because when you're living life and you're going through whatever life is throwing at you this week, at some point, aren't you glad that there is a purpose behind some of the things that we're dealing with? 
that God has a concept of what's going on and, and he knows what's in your situation and he can bring good in your situation, it's good to know that there may be some meaning and purpose behind the stuff we deal with. And we can join in with God's plan. Jesus is a savior. He's the Messiah, the chosen one. Uh, and then also, he's the Lord. Lord means boss or master. And what it comes down to is, when we put our faith in Jesus, what we're saying is we're putting our faith in God's plan. God has a plan. He's a purpose. I'm going to align my life with his purpose. And so we trust that God's ways are better. We strive to live according to God's purpose and design. Ultimately, the angel's kind of telling us, get our focus off of our issues. You know, there's so many times that we focus on, on the problems and the situations and all the horizontal, and we forget to focus on the vertical. We forget to focus on God. The angel said that God is going to enter, and he's going to enter the craziness of our lives. But you need to let him get involved. You know, when I have visited people in the hospital, uh, I, I see people kind of in the same basic situation. They're in a place they don't want to be, eating food they really don't like, and they're get, trying to get news from a doctor that's going to be either really good or really bad. And when I see people in the hospital, I see some people who are depressed and angry and bitter and critical. And I see some people in the exact same situation that are happy, energetic, they're positive. And what it comes down to is a choice that we make a choice that depends on our focus. Are we focusing on our problems and our issues? Or are we putting our focus where it needs to be, on what God is doing and what he can do in us and through us? Are you paying attention to the problems or the solution? The source of our joy is Jesus Christ. We have a need for joy. We have the source of joy through Jesus Christ. Well, what happens when you have that joy? Well, the result of joy is found in the example of the shepherds. There in chapter 2, uh, verse 15. When the angels had left the shepherds and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And verse 20, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they'd been told. The shepherds went to find Jesus. And when they found him, they rejoiced. And then they went and told other people. And you know what? There, it's a pattern for us. We need to continue to seek Jesus. Some of you have been in the church, I don't know, maybe since you were a kid. And even if you've been in church since you were a kid, there are times that we need to put our focus back on Jesus and seek him. Because there's a lot of things that distract us. And even though you may know that you need to seek him first, knowing and doing are two different things. There are so many things that distract us. We have to keep pursuing that relationship with Jesus. Second thing is to praise God. We thank God, we praise him for what he's done, for who he is. We take the time to think about him. You know, I would even encourage you that when God does something in your life, that you write it down. Because if you don't, you're, you, if you're anything like me, you tend to forget these things. Okay? You know, it, it's one of those things that, that God gives you some blessing in your life, and you're like, oh, God, you are so incredible. Thank you so much. You are awesome. And two weeks later, we've totally forgotten about that. And it's like, God, why are you letting this stuff happen to me? Why don't you ever show, why don't you do anything in my life? We forget what he's done. And so I encourage you to praise God and, and to write those things down so you've got a, 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 a history of what he's done in your life. You know, it, it's very encouraging when you see God working that way. I was having a conversation with a guy this week and we we're kind of talking about prayer and, and how the Bible says we need, need to be constantly in prayer he said he was driving his son to school and they saw a sunrise. They were just looking at how beautiful that was. They said, you know, just acknowledging God in that instant. You know, praising God for, for the beauty that he's created. Sometimes I think we, we have this idea in our head that, that praising God and praying to God, we've, we've got to have our, our knees bowed, our heads bowed, our hands closed, and, and we have this formal time of thanking God, okay? And it's like, Seriously? I'm glad that this guy didn't do it because he was driving with his son to, to school, and so that would cause some issues. 
But do you notice God throughout your day? And do you give him credit for the good things that are in your life? Are you praising God like the shepherds did? And then are you sharing the news? Are you sharing the news about the joy in our lives? Because when you see a great movie, don't you go tell people about it? When you see a great game, don't you tell people about it? When you, when you eat at a, at a wonderful restaurant, don't you go and tell? You can't keep that message to yourself. You, you, you've experienced something that's really great. Well, how much more so when you've experienced joy in your life through Jesus Christ, should you share that message with a lot of people who don't have a lot of joy? How much more so should we share that message? You know what? We just want to make it easy for you. In your bulletins this morning, a couple of postcards like this. Just an invitation that you can give to people. Say, hey, check out our church uh, over, you know, over the, on, on Sundays. Here's the service that we're doing. We've got a Christmas Eve service. There's all kinds of things that you can do with postcards like this. When you go into a mall and you're in line and people are crabby and you just need to spread a little joy, you know, just say, have you tried this? Are you missing joy in your life? Because our church, maybe you could, they could share some with you. Or um, maybe you take uh, just a stack of them, put them on your desk at work. And so when someone comes by and, and is talking to you and they kind of see the, the stack there, you know, what's that? Well, you know what? Our church has some really cool services this Christmas season. Here, take one. Love to have you come. You know, I think that we think that sharing the message of joy is going to be this incredible thing that you, this, you've got to be so on and have this script written out for yourself. And it's as simple as saying, you know what? You look like you could use some joy in your life. Why don't you come check this out? That's as simple as it has to be. Because the people around us need joy. And the really, the only source of true joy in life is going to be through Jesus Christ. And if we don't share that, a lot of people are going to miss out. I came across this letter uh, that this young lady uh, wrote to her parents uh, when she went off to college. She said, it's been three months since I left for college. I know I haven't written, and, and I'm sorry, but I wanted to bring you up to date on what's going on in my life. I was in a hospital for quite a while after I jumped out of the window of my dorm when it caught fire. Uh, I only spent two weeks in the hospital, and I can almost see normally now. Uh, fortunately, there was a guy there who saw the whole thing, and he came to visit me in the hospital. Uh, since I didn't have a place to stay, he was kind enough to share his apartment with me. Um, and so he's a very nice guy. We've fallen deeply in love, and we're planning on getting married. Um, we haven't set the date yet, but it's going to be before the baby is born, so, so don't worry about that. Um, and now that I brought you up to date, uh, I, just, I just wanted to let you know that everything I just got done writing you is not true. However, I am getting a D in sociology and an F in science and uh, wanted to make sure you had those grades in proper perspective. <laughs> Your loving daughter. You know, during this Christmas season, there are times I think we need to put things in perspective. With all the craziness and, and, and the frustrations that are out there, we need to keep things in perspective. Hebrews 12 says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus knew what the cross was going to be like. And the Bible says that, that the circumstances, he knew what it was going to be like. He said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. No matter what the situation was, Jesus had joy because he knew that the, the situation he was going to be in was going to be worth it because it was going to free people from their sins. So he endured the cross with joy. Now, I don't know what circumstances you're dealing with, but I think that they're probably going to be less than taking on the sins of the entire world. Jesus offers salvation, freedom from our sins, forgiveness for what we've done in the past. And if you don't have a relationship with him, we would love to share with you what it means to be a follower of Jesus, to have your sins forgiven. Uh, Steve and I will be available after the service is done. We'll be in the back, and, and you can talk with us about one of those things. But let me just remind you of this. There's a lot of people that need joy around us. And when we fix our eyes on Jesus, we have a much better job of sharing. We have a much better chance of sharing that with them and remembering it for ourselves. Let's pray.